Uh, we open up at Kansas on Friday night, start of the men's college basketball season. Our team's excited uh, about the opportunity. We're excited about playing in Allen Fieldhouse, uh, one of the most, if not the most, uh, historic uh, venues in college basketball. Uh, we're opening up with them uh, because I wanted to go see what it's all about. Uh, after being in college basketball for over 30 years as a player, an assistant coach, and a head coach, uh, it's one of the places that I've never been. And so that's how the scheduling of the game came about uh, because I wanted to go see it and be a part of it. Uh, it's going to be a great experience for our team and our players, our players and our coaches. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get a little history lesson, lesson while we're there. Uh, we're going to take a tour of the Kansas's uh, basketball museum, which uh, dates all the way back to the start of basketball. Uh, really want our players to uh, learn what, uh, how basketball started, where it started, uh, the history of, of Kansas basketball. And I want, I want them to get the feel of uh, the whole experience. And, and uh, I just think it's going to be a great, great trip. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to treat it that way. And uh, uh, we look forward to, you know, the opportunity to play uh, a great Kansas team. Coach, this is your first year with a full rack of scholarships. How has that benefited you so far, especially getting some big guys out there like Tyler and Marvin? Well, the, the full complement of scholarships uh, has been nice. So of all the uh, penalties that we, we've received over the last three years due to uh, with our APR situation, uh, the loss of scholarship, scholarships uh, was the worst thing. And to have a full complement now, uh, it, it just feels like that uh, the chains have been taken off somewhat and we can go about recruiting uh, with the same number of, uh, of athletic aid as everybody else. Uh, we've got 16 guys out, out there right now that uh, op we open practice with, and I had forgotten how to practice with 16 guys, to be quite honest with you. And, and uh, so it's been a... It's been a good thing uh, to be back somewhat normal in, in that respect. And uh, uh, I think as we move along from year to year, uh, because of the full scholarships, you'll, you'll really start seeing our, our recruiting uh, improving from year to year. In terms of just what you, all you guys have been through and, and what you've done in, in training camp, do you think you got, your team has finally learned, as you would say, how to win just from everything they've been through? Well, I think this, uh, after a, a month of practice of watching and coaching uh, this team, there's no question in, in our coaches' minds that, uh, that we've improved. Uh, we feel it. Uh, we, we've improved in some areas that uh, were important to us. We wanted to get more athletic, and we have. We still need to get more, more than we are, but we have, we've improved ath athletically, which has been a problem for us. Uh, uh, we've got a true point guard in the program right now, that uh, freshman, uh, who, by the way, will start for us Friday night. His first college basketball game will be at Kansas in front of a sellout crowd. How exciting for him. But, uh, uh, you know, we've improved there. And uh, we've got a low post player uh, that's got great hands, got a knack for scoring. We've, kind of, we've improved in that respect. Uh, a new wing player, 6'6 six, six wing player that uh, is going to be fun to watch. Uh, so we've improved. We, we feel it already. What we don't know is how many wins uh, that necessarily means right now. And that remains to be seen. And when you're in our situation, which is uh, it's your first year with a full load of scholarships and, and you've been in, in, uh, under, under these sanctions, uh, you know, you just you have you have so many unknown about how much improvement you can make in that first year, and that's kind of where we're at. We feel like we've improved. We feel like that we're going to be a better basketball team. We we're, uh, we I know we're a better basketball program. Uh, I just don't know right now, you know, what that means in in terms of a number of games won. But but we'll find out. What about rebounding? Of post presence you guys can improve in that 
Well, you know, that's a that's a that's an excellent point in terms of you know we wanted to improve our length and athleticism uh, to help us rebound. Uh, that was one of the areas that that uh, has been a sore spot for us for the past three years. We've been a short a short basketball team for the for the past three years and. And while we don't uh, have a 6'10 or a 7-footer or even 6'9 right now, we have improved our height and our length across the board with our team. We have uh, seven guys uh, that, that are in the 6'6 six, six to 6'7, six, 6'6, seven, 6'8 six, 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 range, around 6'7 really, seven of our, of, our, of our players. That's an improvement uh, from, from just having two or three. And uh, so that, you know, we'll continue to uh, work on that in terms of recruiting. But uh, we, we've gotten taller across the board with some more length. That should lead to some better rebounding. Coach, talk about the changes in the conference and then also with the conference tournament, just eight teams going in. <clears throat> is that one of the things, the goal that you're trying to press the team to get to New Orleans for the conference tournament? Well, you, you would think – uh, just initially looking at it, that the loss of teams like Middle Tennessee and, and uh, uh, North Texas, uh, Florida International, Florida Atlantic, that uh, there would be a drop-off uh, in terms of the men's basketball uh, conference play. But it, it's actually been, I think it's going to be just the opposite. Uh, Georgia State comes in the league, and some people have them picked to win the league. Uh, they've got a great player in the coach's son uh, who could play a lot of places in the country. Texas Arlington's coming off an outstanding year. Uh, Texas State has a returning uh, big man that uh, has been picked, you know, anywhere from first to second team all-conference. Uh, so, and then not to mention uh, the teams still in the league that return some really good players. Uh, Western Kentucky is loaded, and they've been picked to win the league by a lot of people. Uh, Lafayette has two all conf- preseason first team all conference picks. Uh, they've got a point guard that probably could go out in the draft this year. Uh, they're going to be good. Arkansas State's got a lot of guys back. Uh, Arkansas Little Rock's got everybody back. Uh, South Alabama's got the reigning pre-se- the reigning player of the year back. So I think the league got better. Uh, believe it or not, I think it got better uh, as a whole, uh, which is a good thing for all of us. For us, uh, with eight teams going to the conference tournament out of ten, uh, I think that's a good goal for us, for where we're at in our program, that uh, a, a realistic goal for our team this year would be to make sure we make the conference tournament. That's a goal. That's an attainable goal. Uh, it's something uh, anywhere, if, anywhere, like I told our team, anywhere from first to eight would be fine with me. They want to if they want to finish first, great. Uh, but but I would I would consider you know making the tournament uh, at eighth uh, an improvement. Uh, uh, we finished last last three years in a row for all the reasons that have been well documented, and and we were picked preseason last again this year, and for a reason. We've got to step out of the cellar before you start getting some preseason respect, or or you start getting picked higher than that, and and so. Uh, for me, uh, you know, making the conference tournament uh, is something that we can sell to our team all year long, all the way to the end. And uh, if we accomplish that, regardless of what place we finish, I feel like that we've—I would feel like that we've taken a step in, in the right direction, and we need to keep recruiting. What can we expect to see for the next level from Amos this season? Well, I think uh, Amos has worked hard uh, in the off season. I think he and Jayon James both, two returning starters who will both start on Friday night uh, against Kansas. They both worked hard. Uh, I think they both improved uh, their games uh, individually. Uh, but it's it's not just them uh, that will uh, – it's not just their play that, that will determine uh, if we have a successful season or not. I think Amos and Jayon's – uh, transition into this year is to learn how to play with other good players. I think we're going to start three new starters with them on Friday night, and they're three pretty good players. And so blending Amos and Jayon 
their willingness to blend with with these three new starters uh, and and people off the bench uh, will go a long way in in how well we do. Uh, and uh, you know you can't win it by you can't win by we proved it last year they can't win it by themselves they need some help, and we've brought a little help in and uh, you know you always need more and and where we're at in our stage of this rebuilding project we you know we really need more but but we're happy with what, what we've done this year and and uh, so ain't back to Amos and 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 Jayon, I, I group him with Amos because they're returning two starters uh, they're going to have to learn. Uh, how to play with these new guys, and and at times they're going to have to defer to them because uh, they're good players. They're good players as well, and how that all meshes out will go a long way. And and uh, how many games we can win? You mentioned about Coppola, and he'll be starting night one. And I've asked you about this the other day, but just kind of comment again or comment again, having a true point guard. You play in the position. <clears throat> Having that to be able to coach him up and having him from a true freshman in your program. Well, it's 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 one of it's one of the reasons I believe that that Nick came here. He he saw an opportunity uh, to compete uh, for a starting position as a freshman. Uh, I don't mind saying that he's won that position uh, in our preseason. He's won it really hands down. Uh, a lot of it's due to he is a true point guard. He can. He can really dribble it and pass it. He gets our team in the, in the offensive plays. Uh, he plays extremely hard. Uh, uh, he can push the ball on a fast break. We, we're really uh, doing well in that area. A lot of it's due to his push. Uh, he can score it a little bit when he needs to, and, and uh, he's, he's fun to watch. And Now, he's going to have some freshman mistakes uh, because he is a freshman. No question about it. Uh, and he's probably going to have some Friday night at, at Allen Fieldhouse. But uh, I think it's clear, when it's clear to your team that he should be in there, uh, then you've got something. And, and, and fortunately for him, he's a freshman. And, and uh, he gets to do it as a freshman. And, and uh, I think he's just going to really grow with our program over the next four years. Uh, and as he gets better every game and every year, our program will get better uh, every game and every year. And and, and uh, it's really a unique situation for him. He, we needed a guy like him, and and he needed a program like us. And it's been a it's been a good marriage so far. What's it been like for you having your son be a part of the team and just having him go from your driveway to the practice court in your life? Well, it's been it's been great having Lance as a part of our program. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, in practice, uh, <clears throat> when he hit his when he made his first three point shot in live action in practice, which took a little while, by the way, but he made his first three point shot. I stopped practice and gave him a hug in front of everybody, and the team loved it. And and uh, you know, it's a special moment uh, when you can have your son. Uh, be in the program that that you played at, uh, but also that you uh, I get to coach him, uh, and uh, you know I, I've said many times before that uh, I, I'm going to work real hard at at making this an enjoyable experience for Lance and uh, and an enjoyable experience for me, and that's the way I want it to be, and and uh, it's been great so far. In terms of a non-conference schedule at the beginning of the season, how do you feel like that will give you guys the test you need before conference play starts to finish in one of those first 85? Well, this, this non-conference schedule, I think I mentioned when we released it, is a very serious non-conference schedule. You're talking about at Kansas, at LSU, at Ole Miss, at Ohio State. Uh, you've got uh, some, other, some other games, uh, some teams that uh, – have, have uh, been to postseason play. Uh, one of the APR sanctions still left on on our our board is a loss of three games, which we did last year, and we're doing again this year. And this will be the last year of it, but it hurts us because that's three more opportunities for home games that we that we didn't get. So that also makes the non-conference schedule very very difficult. It's really not the right schedule for this particular team. That's this schedule is for a team that 
just went to postseason play last year and got and has four starters returning. That's what this schedule is really for. But with that said, uh, we're going to use it as a as an opportunity for great exposure for our team, our program, our school, our athletic department. You know, when when the football team opened up last year and beat Arkansas at Arkansas to start the season, our name, the three letters ULM, went nationwide. It really, really did. It, it impacted not only our football program, our name brand, but all the sports and the school. And we can use these games at these places that I mentioned uh, to continue putting our brand out there. And, and you know, after Friday night's game uh, in Kansas, uh, we're going to be on uh, every highlight show uh, across the country. Hopefully it's good highlights about ULM. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully there's some good highlights there. Uh, but, but we're putting our brand out there, and it started with the football program. It started uh, uh, that kind of rec national recognition has filtered uh, to all of us. And so our non-conference schedule gives us the opportunity to do that, to, su to sell our continue to sell our name and our school out across the country. And also, after this is over, the non-conference schedule, if we can survive uh, this thing and, 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 and really accomplish uh, some things in terms of playing on the road, this should be a great uh, way to learn how to play on the road as we go into conference play because we're going we're gonna to have played at some of the best places in the country. And uh, if we can play some good basketball in those in those places, then uh, you would think that it would carry over into the Sun Belt and, and we can play well on the, on the road as well.